Now that you've finished reading what ophiolites are, I want to take a moment to show you how they form. Because I think if you see how they form, it's going to help you understand what they are. So as we learn, the ophiolite sequence forms at the MOR, right, at the mid-oceanic ridge. Very specifically, it forms in the mid-oceanic ridge. So it forms because of the divergence, right, that is occurring. So let's take a look, right? We learned that there was a couple of layers to the ophiolite sequence. Let's see how they form. So let's just say, and this is going to be a very simplified view here, that here we have a mid-oceanic ridge. Right? Obviously we know it's not flat, so just go with me on this. I'm making this very simplified. So if I'm at a mid-oceanic ridge, that means I have one plate going this way and a secondary plate going that way. They're moving apart from each other. So what happens is this tensional crack opens up. Now, obviously we know that that crack doesn't just leave a hole open right down to the center of the earth where you can fall in. But what we have down here is the asthenosphere. And remember, the asthenosphere is partially molten. So if there's a crack that forms, it wants to get up and it wants to get out of there. So what happens is that partially liquid material is going to fill this gap in. All right, so it's going to make this nice vertical structure. Now, it's going to come up and it's going to fill that whole thing in. So hopefully you can see that this is a vertical structure. These are what we call dikes. Dikes are going, and we're going to learn more about these when we get to the igneous chapter. Dikes are these vertical, straight up and down structures. So really, the whole ocean floor is made up of these structures. Because remember, what happens is when these plates start to split apart again, right, that dike right here is going to split in half, right? So half of that red will go that way and half of that red will go this way. So there we see that layer, right? These are the dikes. Now, when that lava, right, when this, excuse me, when this magma comes up, you think it just comes to the stop, top and just stops? Of course not. It's going to come out on the surface. However, remember, we are underwater, right? So what happens is we don't get a lava flow underwater. What happens is it comes out and it's hitting that water. Now remember, this magma might be 700 degrees, and the water might be, let's say, 100 degrees, right? So the water is far colder than the lava. So what happens is it forms this bubble, right? And the outside of the bubble is going to cool and form a crust first. Now, what happens is just like, let's say, when you bake a pie. All right, if you bake an apple pie and you take it out of the oven and you just can't wait, right? You can't wait to eat it. It tastes so good and it smells so good. You slice into it. Now, the crust might be cold, but the inside is going to be hot. So when you go take a bite, it's going to burn your mouth. We see the same thing with these ophiolite sequences or what this bubble of lava that comes out. So what happens is the inside is still hot, so it's going to crack open, and you're going to get another blob, and that'll eventually crack open, you'll get another blob, and another blob, and so on and so forth. And these are what we call pillow basalts. Apparently at one point in time, they reminded someone of pillows. As you'll see on the next slide in this lecture, they don't really resemble pillows, they're just like these big blobs. So now we've seen where the sheeted dikes come from, and where the pillow basalts come from. There's two more layers. Okay. The layer on top is sediment. So let's put a thing here because we're going to have these all right, pillow basalts all over. So we have sediment that sits on top. That sediment is coming from the ocean. So any sand or silt or fish scales or things like that, it's going to settle down through the water and get deposited right on top. Now, we don't really have sediment at the mid-oceanic ridge because that's brand new. So sediment is going to accumulate. So the further you are away from the ridge, right, the thicker the sediment's going to be. All right, so now we have layers one, two, and three. The fourth layer is what happens underneath. Right at, these, right at this crack, right at the MOR, it's very hot. It's extremely hot. But as we move away from the mid-oceanic ridge, it's not so hot down here. What happens is the upper part of the mantle starts solidifying and it connects onto the bottom of the sheeted dike layer. This is a mineral or rock that we call 
Gabbro. We're going to talk more about Gabbro when we get to the igneous rock layer, but we're going to learn that basalt and Gabbro are essentially the exact same rock. All right. So hopefully now you've seen where each of these four layers come from. The sediment right, falls down and gets deposited. The sheeted dikes form as that magma comes up through the crack, the tensional crack, and then flows out on top forming those pillow basalts. And as we move away from the mid-oceanic ridge, the top part of that mantle solidifies and forms the gabbro layer. So hopefully that clarifies the ophiolite sequence for you.